just a quick disclaimer this information is all from ex students ex professors my experience and it's not just from one college it's all about all different colleges but it could be different this information could be different for different courses this is just my experience and my subject but it should be relevant for all science um, applicants but it could be slightly different for other applicants but it should still be useful also if you have any questions at the end my email is there just copy it as Mr. Mukar was saying there are really different feelings passion and enthusiasm knowledge or academic capability the reason why they want these specific things is because that's what makes the best student and they're looking for the best student so they can get most first and boost their ratings and maybe even have a few people go on to carry on at the university like a load of people do and carry on to get their professor professorship there um, after their PhD of course and then teach there eventually over time also something I don't want to get a lot of people wasting their summers on is unrelated unspecialized volunteering and work experience I didn't have any work experience at all volunteering actually um, so it's not really needed but it is needed for some courses obviously like medicine they really are looking for like more specialized works for example for a lawyer for uh, someone who study, wants to study law they should work for work with lawyers or lawyer firms this is mainly because they the stats at the end of their um, course is like um, they want people to get um, em employed because that helps their stats and helps them become the top university in their rankings so they want you to have as much help when you get there to um, get a job but but they also give their but some places like they have such high rates that they don't care really if you do have this work experience so then it's not as important as the um, passion and enthusiasm and academic capability just because it's Oxbridge they don't really need the extra work experience for people to get their um, job offers in the future something important to do is make sure your application is unique and special they get hundreds of applications per year and they have to go through every single one of them most people are prefects, head boys, head girls, have work experience and have volunteering it's not going to get you past the cut they rank personal statements and if you just have that they're not going to be impressed they want something special and unique one thing you can do to make your um, application look professional and um, unique and special is learn a spec topic like go onto their website look at their specification and learn a topic so for us what it can do is um, does, does not just help with the personal statement it can help with the personal statement as well as you can bring it up in, a, in the interview as a because what, what they do is they start off with warming you up because they understand that everyone's going to be scared so what they do is they will start off slowly and if you can bring that in press them that way then they'll be more impressed when you get the answers right as well um, what I did was I talked about I talked about grip of cracks with the young scientist journal it's a second year topic and I know they were impressed because a student there actually told me afterwards that they were talking about it and that, that they were impressed with what I did and what they they were so impressed that they actually tried to make the questions a bit harder so because they thought the questions originally would be easy so even though I thought I failed in general they were still quite impressed and they did eventually give me the offer um, another thing you could do is um, work on this charity that I actually found called Bubble STEM it's basically uh, a peer-to-peer -peer resource bank for A level and GCSE content. So, if your subject that you're applying to is um, has a A level and GCSE or GCSE topic, you could um, 
apply the drawing there and it's again unique and something some, most people won't have and could go in your personal statement. Entrance exams are made for applications. Different courses have different entry exams. It can really make or break an application. Chemistry, tons of TSA, it's not really chemistry related. Whereas PAT is for physics and it's basically physics. So what I would recommend doing is go into the admissions test table. Um, it's easy to find and it'll give you all the admission sets. You can click on them to find the subjects that they're for, but I'll just go through the part. Um, gives you a whole bunch of information about it. So it's for material science, physics, physics, engineering, lasts two hours and is on time for admissions, etc. It'll go through all of this, tell you all of this, and this you have to make sure you know and even they don't tell you they don't they don't even put it on the website but as of twenty nineteen you can use a calculator now, so yeah. Um if you go to how do I prepare, it can also tell you um it'll give you past papers. So what I recommend doing is doing at least one right now to see where you will go. So papers like this, I'm not gonna spoil much for you guys but it's a pretty simple um classic paper um that they also give you a report here this will tell you and plot um all the applicants for all the places um it will show you how much they reduce just using the pattern alone or the entrance exam alone right here it'll tell you how the past pass mark basically Anyone scoring 47 or above out of 100 passes. When I did the test, I got roughly 40s, it was always around here. Um, but when I sort of finished, I was always up here, um, sort of in the upper bound area. You don't really even need to be in the upper bound area, you can be towards 50%. Even if you do get below this in the actual test, if you show you're working out and you show everything perfectly, they could still accept you in. What they would do is for a small percentage lower than that, so let's just say 43 for example, they'll look at their papers. If they show good working out, good understanding and everything, they'll invite you to the interview. Simple as. Or even if there's like, it's, you can mention this in the website. Um, here, they they will say somewhere. Um, uh, there are there are topics that you may not go through in school. So, if you they will look for these topics, and they're really good at spotting that. Oh, this this kid hasn't done this in school yet. So, what they will do is they will look at it and if they determine that you haven't done it in school they will deduct you from your percentage and they'll give you a different mark and they might they might just push you over. So it's um they they look at the lower part and if you're not getting that percentage they might still accept you in. Um but it depends on the test and some tests are just multiple choice and it's really it's, it's kinda of different. So you you need to sort of be aware for each test it could be different. They also um, give you a syllabus which you should go over during the summer holidays. All here. They could give you more of this but keep in mind they change the syllabus all the time so you should go off this page here rather than their past papers because past papers will give you somewhat different um, have somewhat different um, services. They also give you websites and resources. I personally use the Olympiad. Um, Olympiad is much harder than the actual paper because it's meant for the for a few months after your entrance exam, but it's still very good to do. Um, it it it's uh, I you can also use Isaac Physics, which I I also use Isaac Physics, but there's multiple websites and 
use these same websites for the interview just for practice because you would uh, you will see that your interview questions are slightly harder than Olympiad questions, and that's in my opinion at least. So they're just good sort of questions to look at. Um, ideally, you should go to an open day before your application. That's not the end of the world if you don't. I personally did, and I thought it was a good experience because. Um, I got to go to the subject department just to see if Oxford was the place because, um, because sometimes Oxbridge isn't as good as other universities and might not be the best place for you so I just made sure that it was the rank that the ranking for right Oxford was the best for the course in the world so I had to make sure so I didn't book in advance but you should really book in advance for the course. Luckily, some people didn't come. I even came like half an hour late because of traffic, and I was still allowed in. So I got lucky, I guess. Um, you should also visit some of the colleges. So um, you should check which colleges offer your course. You can search on here or put in press that link. Um, I would do this before. I didn't, but you should really do this before. Um, shows the the list of them. I would if you got like a full crime I would go before and check to check and make sure that every single one has the requirements because you could just go to facilities and check if they have it. So yeah. Um just make sure before that you know and you don't waste time because it has a somewhat tight schedule. Um the reason why I said that the open day was really good for my application was I managed to meet a few of the professors. They're always there, and you can talk to them for however long you want on the um on like why on any questions you want on what they're interested in and match it up with what you're interested in. That's what I think the open day is good for. You can sort of see what professors are like what part of the subject the professor is interested in and if you're interested in it I would apply there or make it a priority to apply it to that place. Um, I personally did do that with Corpus Christi um, but if there isn't you could go to your home or your department. They should have a people's page which will show everyone in the department. I would go to the academic staff just have a good look at that and determine which um yeah which um person you think is would be the best fit with you because it will help after your application and for your application slightly. I don't really care that much but it will help with the application. So in my case it was David Armstrong who I met on the open day. We both had an int uh, interest in materials under sh extreme environments. I personally had the interest with it in space. He has it with nuclear reactions, etc. Um, so at least I sort of got to know him, and he was also a really nice guy. So that's why I applied to Corpus. But really, colleges doesn't matter unless you really want to go to one of those super party university colleges who have the amazing um, equipment do everything for you and just allow you to have the best time possible but the thing with that is Oxford doesn't matter but for Cambridge it could jeopardize your application because a lot of people apply there and doesn't mean you can get a second um, a second interview if you don't um, don't make the cut no, it, they should. It shouldn't, but it can. Also, they give you two applications, and they and they really don't care if you're the second, if the college was the chosen second or first. They only care about academic potential and your um, drive for the subject. So it, it doesn't matter what really, but just, I would just make sure it had you. You have like a good sort of connection with the subject and the professors and just 
go from there. But yeah, it's just really two ways of applying for colleges. And that's really the only reason why the open day is there and making sure Ox the Oxbridge is for you. So yeah, two ways. The professors and what the colleges offer.